Hello and welcome to this week's weekly music show with me, Marjorie Hash. I'm delighted to welcome an American with an incredible voice who's been based in Paris for the last several years. She's just released her second studio album, High Priestess. Sarah McCoy, thank you so much for joining me in the France 24 studio. I'm really pleased that you invited me. Thank oh, you so much. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. Congratulations uh, on this new album and your up and coming tour around France and other parts of Europe. Yeah. I'm uh, excited to discuss this just in a few seconds because we've got to go to the 65th uh, Grammy Awards, uh, which took place on Sunday night. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you tend to watch them or are you? Uh, you know, I don't like watching parties I'm not invited to. <laughs> That's <laughs> fair. That is absolutely <laughs> fair. <laughs> well, how about we uh, take a little look? We're going to start off uh, with, of course, uh, the one and only Beyonce, who has broken the record of most Grammy Awards won throughout her mm -hmm. career. Queen Bee has amassed a grand total of 32 Grammys, and this time she took away four, including Best R&B Song and Best Dance Electronica Recording for her latest album, Renaissance. Other big winners include Adele, Taylor Swift, Kendrick Lamar, who took home Best Rap Performance, Best Rap Song, and Best Album, uh, well, and Rap Album, sorry, because it's former One Direction pop idol, Harry Styles, who won Best Album for Harry's House. Let's take a listen to a track off the record. Excuse me, green tea, music for we should also note that Viola Davis is now an all-round award winner with an Emmy, a Grammy, Oscar and Tony's under her belt. Uh, well, thank you so much for popping down. France 24, Sarah McCoy. Uh, I want to talk about High Priestess. It's got sure. incredible vocals. It's got wonderful storytelling with guitar and piano. And a lot of it, I think, is based around your traveling around the US when you, you were younger in New Orleans and also this move to to France a little bit? I Actually, it's more about uh, who I became after I was here. Uh -huh. um, my first album, Blood Siren, was more about the the traverse traversing point yeah. up until my my late uh 20s early 30s mm -hmm. no but this is more of a um it became kind of as i started going through therapy mm -hmm. as i started going to therapy you hit 30 you gotta it's there's so much cleaning that needs to be done and mm -hmm. i had a lot um mm -hmm. and as things were getting pulled out of my head i think that um there was a place that they needed to go. I mean, there's like the, the reason that I do this, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and so for me, it was a place to put exactly how I was feeling in a universe that felt like the emotion I was experiencing. Mm -hmm. If that, because it wasn't just piano and voice this time. No. It was a lot of different elements. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was kind of a special process. It took less time than Blood Siren, my first album, but I think I really got to know myself as I was healing. Mm -hmm. And that was a really special thing because I think it was the first time that I'd ever really experienced my music in that way. Uh -huh. So it was a new reconnection in a, in a, in a way to, to your music. Yeah, it was like a summoning back to self through music. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I know there's an, a, an evolution with other, you know, uh, things that were brought in and elements musically yeah. speaking, but it's true that what really grasps the, as a listener is, is your voice, that is like the true core of, of your music. Thank you. Um, I read that so that you'd um, left home at 16 uh, with just your guitar in tow, traveled oh around the US. New Orleans, which is like a cradle of music in the US. Yes. And then that's where someone uh, found you at a French documentary maker and yeah. took you to France. Can you tell us a little bit about your, your story, which is fascinating? OK, so I feel like there's like a little bit of mythology that kind of got mixed. Amazing. Between the, well, I know, but no, there's like a language barrier. It's like she left her home at 16 with a guitar. And that's mm. kind of not how it played out. I left mm. at 20. My mom, well. Mm -hmm. Not to crucify my mother. Mm -hmm. My mom and I were not getting along when I was 16, so I was out. Um, but around 20, yeah, I did, I did leave. And at some point, I was kind of tired of just being a bum. And I knew I knew how to play music, and I'd prefer to do that. So at some point, we procured enough money mm -hmm. to get myself a guitar. And that's how I would kind of move down the line to New Orleans, mm -hmm. cutting that story short. And... Uh, yeah, once I was in New Orleans, I think I, f I found a place where I was able to not only be myself as a musician or start to, 
but being exposed to other people who were gods of music. Mm. I mean, kids that had grown up with music since they were three, dancing since they were children, you know what I mean? And it was um, a very special kind of experience to have people like that around me who supported my discovering my music. Mm. And uh, so that's around the time I was playing in bars and that's how I was meeting all these people. And, um, you know, I played the happy hour, mm -hmm. which was like uh, four to six every day or every Monday and Thursday at a bar. And, uh, you know, it's kind of when you meet the, the day drunks or whatever. <laughs> and not to say that Bruno was a day drunk. He was just enjoying himself in New Orleans. And also everybody in New Orleans is kind of a day drunk. Yeah. So. Um, he's a document, French documentary maker. That that's when he came in and uh, and he said, wow, you've got something. And um, the next day he took a little video of me and that video was passed and that video was passed. And then mm -hmm. I ended up here doing a couple of short tours. And then one of those led to me meeting Chili Gonzalez, yeah. which uh, led to me doing a record with him, which led to me being here now it's that's like amazing. I feel very strange like following the trajectory of it because I'm like that's long mm -hmm. and yet it felt like it happened so quickly and the right timing probably in, in some ways yeah it yeah. was all and just having fun and seeing where things go mm -hmm. I never expected it to go anywhere I wanted to just play in a bigger bar oh, and well, uh, now I'm playing in Paris <laughs> and, you know it's like really fun well let's watch uh, an extract of what we can see in this bigger bar that is the world <laughs> 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 Just because you're handsome now Don't be an nice For every compliment you give me Well, you insulted me twice Yeah, your lack of affection was No fault of mine And I can't see, see damn thing taken from the beautiful High Priestess, the new Sarah McCoy uh, record, which is absolutely fabulous. We recommend absolutely. Uh, France, what's it been like living in France? Has that infused your music a little bit? I think it's let me uh, discover myself in an individual kind of way, but also there's, I have to give a shout out to Polo and Pan and Flavien Berger. Ah, yeah, Berger? I, yeah, yeah, excuse me. I'm no, it's very my good. My accent, American. Uh, because listening to their music was really like, oh, the weird things can be popping off in your ears and I can try mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So I really enjoyed um, discovering them. And I don't think I would have necessarily if I had just mm -hmm. not been in France. Um, you've also got beautiful visuals. I know that like you dress up, you like have like glittery uh, eye makeup or like uh, um, appar apparatus and you dress up. It's very like voodoo-esque and obviously it made me think about New Orleans because its culture is super rich and it's such a melting pot. Is that stayed with you, would you say? I've always liked the costume anyway. Mm. I was a big mm. fan of this band called Guar, which was a whole different kind of costume, mm. very um, monster kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But also Mardi Gras is tomorrow, so happy Mardi Gras. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the but yeah, it was Mardi Gras. You know, there's always a, an opportunity to like make a personage mm -hmm. to, to wear around and, and be for a minute. Yeah. And that was always really fun. Mm -hmm. So I started bringing that to stage and that was, I'll never let go of that. That's that's so fun to uh -huh. me. Do you have, um, as you're going to be going on tour in France. Yeah. I'm really excited uh, to have you, but also across other parts of Europe. How many characters do you have? Do you only have one or do you have multiple no, on stage? I'd like to say it's a segment of myself. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like she is me. She has access to all of my memories and fooleries mm -hmm. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But um, not the complete picture. Uh -huh. I think just like the shiny part. <laughs> That's fabulous. We like some fabulous. Um, talking about fabulous, Shelly Gonzalez. So you mentioned him. Yeah. He's one of your mentors. You even wrote a song for him on this record. It was eat a poem. Poem that yeah. turned into a song. So eat the peach for Gonzo. Uh, tell us a bit more about that relationship. So, well, do you want to know more about the poem or the relationship? A bit of both. <laughs> okay, so the poem was actually for his 50th birthday. Mm -hmm. And you think like, you know, what do you give a guy that really has everything he needs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's a very self-actualized person with mm -hmm. all the, the images that he thinks in his head can come to life. And I was like, what the hell do I give him? Mm -hmm. How do you say thank you to somebody for bringing you that far and putting you under their wing? Especially when I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people trying to put themselves in front of him. Yeah. 
And um, I was like, I want to write him a poem. <laughs> so that's how that came out. And there was this very nervous, trembling moment where I read it to him at the end of the night. But then I like grabbed his hand and looked him in the face. And I was like, eat the peach and tell the pit. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, it was just this very loving thing. And he was like, you got to put that on your album. So I did. And he likes it. So obviously that's was, a good sign. It yeah. was a very, I, I can't even get into how tender that moment was. Aww. And it's public TV anyway. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> but would you, um, talking about going to the US, would you like to go back and tour? Have you toured much your, your, your own stuff? No. Uh, no, I haven't. Um, it's not happened yet. Mm -hmm. I don't really have the booker for it and I think we're just kind of trying to build the fan base yeah. where it's the st strongest yeah well we hope our or viewers in America see watch this and uh, yeah. want you over I hope so too <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for no, thank you for talking no it's great because it's our latest news button is just pointing its nose and it's coming up in a few minutes which gives me enough time to remind you to follow our latest culture news on our website france24.com and follow of course Encore at Encore F24 on social media uh, we're going to play out uh, with a track taken uh, from uh, Radical Romantics. It's a new track by the Swedish ambient electronica artist Fever Ray. Sarah McCoy, thank you so much for having been our guest. Remember, High Priestess is available. Let's take it away with Fever Ray. Yay. <laughs> 